morning. Uh, welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I am your preacher for today and also the pastor of this great congregation. Uh, before we get started, uh, there were some blue cards given to you with your uh, bulletin. Uh, please fill them out uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, if you want to draw a smiley face on it, it's okay. And uh, please drop them at the uh, baskets at the exit doors right behind you. If you look around your pews, we have some uh, prayer and praise cards that are uh, provided for you. If you have a uh, prayer or a praise that you want to share with the church congregation, uh, please fill them out and, and give them to me during a segment that we call uh, the birthday bank. Uh, today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. And uh, before I get started, I have my good friend slash neighbor slash uh, boss, uh, Len. Go ahead. At least he knows his place. <laughs> you may have noticed we have a piano player. Gwen Marsh has returned to us. And after extensive negotiations, she has agreed to do it permanently. Yes, we are very happy that Gwen's here. Uh, and uh, it's... It kind of it kind of felt kind of awkward and weird that we have a pianist now because we've been so used to recordings. So God 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 is, has provided us Gwen. Thank you Gwen for being here and uh, accepting the call. Uh, today is as indicated. It's the sixth Sunday of Easter, and we are uh, asking a different question today. In which uh, last month we asked the question, "How shall we live?" which was last month. So this month we ask another question. So we know how to live uh, a Jesus Christ life, for example, through Jesus. But we are wondering, how do we love like Jesus? How do we love like Jesus on a daily basis? How do you love Jesus when a big 4 by 4 Dodge Ram cuts you off on 395 with a big diesel on your face? How do you love Jesus when you are waiting in the Starbucks drive through for over 30 minutes. How do you love Jesus? How do you love it? By still responding in love. And so we are applying Jesus' standard in different contexts of our life and, and, and trying to be as Christ-like as possible. And so that, that is today's, and also the, today is the beginning of the How Shall We Love Worship series. Uh, and, I, and I hope that you enjoy this month. So today is the first Sunday of May. Next week will be Mother's Day. And... Um, and I hope that you will enjoy uh, our ride with questioning and also in your own lives, neighborhoods, and also in, in your own families. How should we love each other uh, as Christ did love his disciples? So before we begin, I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor, even if you don't love them. Um, <laughs> and tell them, hey, welcome. Nice to see you. <laughs> I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able as we sing our song of gathering, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
Good morning. Please pray together. Join me in prayer. Loving God, we praise you for your mighty acts of creation. As we gather here this day, we hear your message of power and love through the witness of Jesus Christ as he prepared his disciples for his departure. He gave them the words of encouragement about living in your love, loving one another, and through that love being witnesses to the whole world of your peace and hope. Be with us this day, Lord. Open our hearts and minds and receive, to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now the scripture is uh, John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. <clears throat> Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, we have uh, Nancy and her puppet friend for our message to children. Hello, hello. Good day, good day. <laughs> Goodness. Ah, such a lovely day. Yes, it is, Reggie. You know there are people, Reggie, who don't like rats. <laughs> well, that's disgusting. <laughs> rats are delightful. Oh, by the way, I do like your shirt. It says, Jesus is a friend of mine. Uh, yes, that's what it says. You, but you know, there are some people that don't like that, that saying. Why, why on earth not? Well, they think that it, it makes it so, it sounds like we're saying Jesus is just like us and, and, and not God. Well, I suppose that people are uh, allowed to have their own opinions, but in the Gospel of John, in the Bible, Jesus says that we are his friends. And so, we must be a friend of Jesus because Jesus says so. Well, don't you think it like <coughs> makes, makes God smaller? Oh, good heavens, no. I mean, God is bigger and wiser and more powerful than, than any of us. Uh, and, and God is with us and shares our joys and our sadnesses. And isn't that what a friend does? Well, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, and you know, also, in the Bible, it, in, in John, it tells us what we should do as friends of Jesus. Um, what's that? Oh, that we are to love one another. And he says it twice. Once before he says we're friends, and once after. So, there it is, all laid out for you. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. It's kind of like we're, you know, all in the same club or on the same team. We're, we're friends, and we all want the, the same thing, to, to love each other. Quite right. And so, as friends of God, we should just go about and love. Well, I think that's great, and I think now I'm, I'm gonna wear this shirt more because if somebody asks me about it, I can just say, what, Jesus wants to be a friend of yours too. <laughs> Perfect. Why don't you pray now? Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> let's pray. Loving God, thank you for saying that we are your friends. We want to be your friend, Lord, and we want to show your love to others. 
In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, should I do the introductions, Liam? Uh, so we have, uh, we're going into a special segment in uh, United Women of the Faith has a special recognition of a special person. Good morning. Uh, this year, the United Women of Faith uh, has awarded, is awarding two special recognition awards. And the first one we gave out this morning at the first service to Kevin Heckert. So when you see her, congratulate her. So uh, the others in the United Women of Faith, if you come and join me here. Okay, um, the United Women in Faith would like to acknowledge a member who is like the Energizer Bunny of our group. She's a great contributor to the craft fair, a knitter, a sewer, a painter, a baker, and a generous contributor donating funds and equipment when we need them. She has also served as co-chair of the craft fair. She's very conscientious in her UWF duties, diligently working on issues until there's a successful resolution. She's a supporter and participant in the Alpine Kids Ministry, she served on the church finance committee, and according to Len, the church administrator, she's the best bean counter to ever serve on that <laughs> finance committee. And this upbeat Energizer Bunny has been and still is the treasurer of the UWF. We would like to present this year's special recognition award to Susan Hammerlin. <laughs> that you were going to get the award, but it's okay. Ooh, get it out of the way. Uh, we're going to the birthday bank. Uh, every week we celebrate our uh, birthdays, our anniversaries, different segments of our lives that we want to celebrate and bring light to it because God's been there all the time uh, through those tough times, happy times. And we just want to celebrate it by giving it back to our birthday bank ministry. It feeds children around the world, and it fulfills uh, other purposes of those ministries related to those purposes. And so uh, if you want to celebrate or if you have something to celebrate in the presence of God and also in the witness of the church, uh, please uh, bring it forward. And also uh, come with your prayer and praise cards if you have any with you. That was that uh, so my twin grandbabies uh, turn 11 this week. All right. Oh. Happy birthday to them. I'll take that. Thank you. Hey, Claudia. My daughter, Robin, will be 60 years old tomorrow. Your daughter, Robin, 60 years old. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, Edie. On Saturday, Alpine Kids was at the Teddy Bear Parade in Diamond Valley School, and they had about 50 of us group people, and, but they had 87 guests, 38 of them were between the ages of uh, 0 and 18 years old, and Susan Hammerlin worked it with us, and you guys would be amazed. She can lift boxes of books and everything if we didn't move fast enough. And she <laughs> and, uh, so Susan, thank you. Our uh, mine is Cindy's 32nd anniversary. Ooh. Happy anniversary. How do you do it? How do you, how do, you do it? 
Friday. Thursday, uh, we celebrated my son's mother's Rachel, uh, her 39th birthday. All right. Birthday to her. Hey, Dave? It's my daughter's birthday this week, and I'm not saying how old she is. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to say a uh, prayer for this birthday, bang. Please say aye. 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 All right, let us pray. Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord that provides uh, so many blessings. We can't count them all, but we honor you in this birthday bank by celebrating different uh, events in our lives because you have blessed us so much. And so, Lord, we ask you to bless uh, this birthday bank to keep it uh, as a reminder uh, for all of us to give. Uh, to help those that feed children around the world because you have given your all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask you all this in his name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, we are going into our tithes and offerings. If you are new here, uh, we don't pass a basket around, but we do have certain loca- we have a location here in our chapel that you can give to the church, which is on the side or, some, or in a basket. But... Also, we also have a, a online giving on our church we- website that you can give to the church. But we do offer a portion of our talent in which uh, our offertory today will be performed by Gwen Marsh titled The Gift of Love. <laughs> Thank you, Gwen. It's a wonderful thing to have you back. And it's been a while since we've heard the Clavinova go that fast. So. <laughs> Please join me in prayer of thanksgiving. God of joy, we offer our gifts this day as we reflect on the wisdom of your word. Jesus urges us to hold on to him to stay connected to his example, presence, and the fulfillment he brings. He reveals that our joy finds completeness when it is woven into his divine joy. Help us abide in him through love, obeying his commandment to love one another in acts of service, healing, and selfless generosity. May may our joy be sustained, a shared and everlasting gift from the source of all joy In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going into our prayers and praises. I will read the prayers that have been submitted to me, and I ask the church to respond with 
Lord, hear our prayers after I've read the prayers. I'll also read the praises submitted, and I ask the church to respond with, uh, we thank you, Lord, after I've read the praises. I want to ask uh, Gwen. God, it's so cool. I'm so happy to have you back. You could just say, Gwen. Um, Gwen, would you please pl uh, play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds? Our first prayer is from Len for uh, prayers for Len, uh, Nancy Lampson as she awaits answers to her health challenge. Uh, prayers for a, for Lorraine and her dog that that they're she's upset that they had a, a traffic accident on 395. She's thinking about moving to Texas, but still thinking. Uh, prayers for Roy Niza. There's a prayer request from Len. Prayers for Roy Niza recovering from a leg infection. Uh, prayers uh, from Tamara Brewer for Richard's sister, Barbara, who is recovering from hip surgery. Uh, prayers for Nancy Lampson, who suffered injuries from a fall. Uh, prayers from Jan Pullman for Father John uh, Corona, retired priest from St. Gauls, from, and he's 91 years old. Uh, he is in Carson Tahoe Hospital with pneumonia. Uh, prayers from Ann Robar, prayers for my brother Steve, who has systolic heart failure. Uh, prayers from R Richard Brewer uh, for Sister Barbara, who is going in for knee surgery this Monday. And these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. And for our praises, our praise uh, from Kathy Wicker. So glad Gwen is back. The organ sounds great. The choir is so happy. Uh, praises from Mike and Pam. They want to uh, say thank you to all, uh, for all of you for the thoughts and prayers for Mike and his surgery. It went well. Uh, praise uh, from Penny, the best, uh, the best time yesterday. Uh, she had the best time yesterday at her grandniece's bridal shower. So much love and thanks to God for getting her safe home, getting her home safe in the blizzard. Uh, praises, that, uh, praises from Brenda uh, that, I, that she has a... Praise that I have a new five-day-old adopted great-niece named Leo. And also, uh, I have a praise, a praise that uh, for yesterday, if you weren't here, uh, we were able to celebrate the life of Barbara Gustafson. It was, uh, very, it was great, a lot of uh, testimony on, on her life of this great person. If you've known her, then you would, it, it, yesterday really fit her personality yesterday. And so, praise be to God. God sows people into our church, and also he takes back so that uh, on, on his will. And these are our praises. We thank you, Lord. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able. Um, if you would please witness the screen. Uh, I will read a prayer of confession. But the first part will be for me, and also uh, the second part I ask that we read together. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We, walked, we walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. We have gone along with evil, with pride, quarreling, and divisiveness. Holy God, God, help us to face 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 ourselves, so, so, so that, that as you move towards us in mercy, mercy we, we may repent, repent turn, turn to you, and receive mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to acknowledge the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge this holy sanctuary. I would like to acknowledge church volunteers, church staff, and also church attendees who are here today. Also, our viewers on YouTube, online, thank you for joining us wherever you are. Uh, as you, you are probably viewing, if you are my wife, you're in Lake Tahoe right now as Zephyr Cove while I'm home alone. Uh, i like to acknowledge our children and our youth and our young adults who are the present and the future of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. i like to acknowledge visitors and friends. Thank you for coming today. If you are new here, I, I encourage everyone to bring their blankets and popcorn just to keep you awake during my very short sermon today. Uh, I come to you with a message from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 9 through 17, that was read to you earlier by our liturgist, Dave Drew. But I will be focusing on a sermon scripture today on John, chapter 15, verse 12, and these are the words that are spoken from the apostle from Jesus. This is my commandment, that you... Love one another as I have loved you. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And my theme for today that I come to you with is love one another. Love one another. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. One of the greatest uh, team sports that I love to play, and yes, that is an earlier uh, shot of me when I was at the age of 21. Um, one of the greatest team sports that I have ever participated in was the sport of rugby. Rugby is a combination of kicking the ball, dribbling, lateral passing, and yes, body-to-body -body tackling. In other words, football without pads and more running. The reason why I love playing rugby is because it built my endurance uh, and it was considered in the sports world that I grew up in the gentleman's sport, the gentleman's sport. You would find me if I would play and I would give an example. High school and college, I played on the off season of football. You would see me on Monday morning with bandages on my face, thinking like it's just normal, being nice to everybody, but I just had a game on on the weekend. Uh, at times it, it does result in fists or professional comments towards one another, friendly fists. Um, however, after the 80 minute game, after all of the, the, the playing and all, all of the, the endurance that's been left on the field, we enjoyed each other's company with a nice cold brew and food and conversation with each other. Everything about the game is left on the field, but we proceed on as human beings enjoying each other's uh, presence because of the love of the game. Now today's scripture is about a commandment that Jesus instills in his followers that will be imperative in a person that follows Jesus Christ. Now, the commandment is to love one another or a love for one another. Jesus describes in verse 9 of today's gospel uh, that the love he is showing them is derived from the love that the Father shows towards him. Uh, that in verse 11, that obeying his, uh, the commandment of his Father uh, is another way of portraying what this type of love is Jesus showing his disciples. In verse 13 to 17, we see that this love that Jesus commands his disciples to remain in transforms people from servant or from a, uh, just a regular person 
to a friend. Uh, in verse 12, the scope of today's scripture comes to surface in regards to Jesus' commandment of love in which he specifically says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I like to divide my sermon into two parts. To love like Christ. Number two, to love all like Christ. Today's gospel in the book of John, Jesus tells his disciples three times uh, about loving one another in different forms and keeping this commandment in verses 10, 12, and 17. The word love is mentioned 686 times in the NIV translation. Furthermore, in today's scripture, Jesus is not preaching any type of love. Uh, he is preaching a love that is lived through the will of God. Last week, we discussed the meaning of the word abide, of the metaphorical display of Jesus as the vine. And Jesus, this week, is following up on that metaphorical uh, depiction of who he is as the vine and being the vine in the essence of bearing fruit and that fruit is called love. Jesus says in verse 9 to the disciples that the love of the Father to him is exemplified in how he has loved them. One thing that I have come to realize as a Christian that loving like Jesus, loving like Jesus, not loving like Latu, no, no, no. Loving like Latu was, that, was the first part of our sermon with me with a rugby ball. Loving like Jesus is very difficult, and it's, it's a standard that you and I struggle with every day. I'll give you guys an example that I gave the first worship service. If you order your food and they keep getting it wrong, Jesus goes out the window. Or if you're in traffic in a big 4x4 four four Dodge, just just cut you off with some big diesel in your face on 395. Jesus goes out the window at times. I've seen it in, in traffic. And I'm not talking about church parishioners. I'm just talking about life, period. There's things in our lives that are thrown. And the first thing that comes into mind is like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. We don't go to Jesus first. Sometimes it's more like, what am I going to do next? Now, to love your enemy or to, uh, to love those who persecute you is a Jesus love, to love your enemy and to persecute you, to love those that don't like you, to, to, to love them regardless, to have a forgiving heart, to show mercy. That is a difficult standard to live by. The word love in today's gospel is pronounced as agapao or agape in, in, uh, in today's English translation, meaning to love and embrace. In, in, in today's subject, to love and embrace God's will. You might ask, how does embracing God's will relate to how I'm supposed to love as Jesus commanded me? Now, the root of God's will is giving his only son to this world as referenced in John 3.16. As every believer knows, this, uh, this scripture from John, John 3.16. And it was displayed through Jesus in taking our place on the cross to cleanse our sins to defeat death, and to pave a way for you and I to have a uh, way for eternal life, or I would say a reunification in God's hands. Uh, God's will through the love of Christ is a, what we would call a sacrificial love. That specific sacrifice was offered to the world to appease God and pardon the wrongdoings of the world. God's love did not see God's love did not see the world for its transgressions, its ugliness and selfishness. God's love did not see it for its mistakes and its downfalls towards him. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8 explains this to, to, uh, to confirm why God really loves us. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while you and me were disobedient to God, while you and I do not listen to God, God still sent his only son to die for us. Now, church family, this is what God's sacrificial love is, a love that does not see 
the world's ugliness, but liberates it from the chains of cruelty. Now, God's love is a love that transforms all with life. He knows what's in our hearts because he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to feel emotions, to take our place on the cross, to know what we feel in pain and sorrow. He knows what's inside our hearts. His intention is to present his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as a potential standard of love for this world. Now, that is a sacrificial love. Uh, that sacrificial love is not a love that is developed by, by AI, artificial intelligence, or, or by the consciousness of human thought. But it is formed, in which Wesley calls it, by the grace of God. The commandment of, of love that Jesus preaches in today's gospel is a divine love, never ending. It doesn't end. There is no beginning and there's no end to it. But it replaces our love as a human being, a finite love, and a love that has an expiration date. You can't love forever because everyone has a day that will be called from this earth. God's love has no beginning or end. The love of a human being is complex in which it can uplift or it can destroy, in which we have a, a Greek word for it which is called eros, which is a romantic love or a lustful love. Um, the love of Jesus Christ is a love that embraces the will of God. It is a love resulting in which we know this word, an unconditional love, a love that is patient, not boastful, and always kind. Jesus commands his disciples carefully, very, very carefully, to love as he did. We, we hear the, the most important commandment asked to Jesus. What is the most important uh, commandment in, in the commandments of Moses? But Jesus tells them to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But today, Jesus reinterprets that through John, that you must love your neighbor as he loved his neighbors, to love like how Jesus loved his neighbors. Jesus commands his disciples carefully. This is a very careful love, that you don't mix it up with, with a eros love, a lustful love, or a love that's willingly on your own command. It is a love that is unconditional, that's turned on through Jesus Christ at all times of your life. It is never away from God. If we were to apply the standards of Christ in life today, you are sacrificing your expectations as a human and, and proceeding with the divine lens of God. That, that, that's what Christ is telling you to, to do in this type of love. It is sacrificing your expectation as a human and then proceeding forward with the divine lens of God. It is conquering the worldview of judgment and seeing one another in the eyes of how God saw this world, not seeing it for its transgressions, but finding a way to get closer to this world through his son, Jesus Christ. An example of Jesus' unconditional love that we can see is in John 4, as he was able to speak to the woman at the well, which was a different ethnicity, which was banned at that time. Another example is interacting with Gentiles or those outside of his community in which they were told not to. Another example is healing those that had abnormal um, physical conditions such as leprosy uh, and also eating with those that were considered unclean. Now, the love Jesus commands is a love that is unconditional. It is a love for anyone. It is a love that's Present, as long as God is here, that love is available. Jesus loves the sinner because he knows it can find its way back. There's always a chance that you can, you can come back to God. Jesus loves the drug dealer. Jesus loves those that are in jail. Jesus loves the three-time felon. Jesus loves the unbeliever. Jesus loves the profane. Jesus loves me for this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor. 
Look at your neighbor, even if you don't love them. Say, tap them on the shoulder and say these words, okay? Re repeat after me. Say these words. I am, I am loved, loved by, Jesus Christ. by Jesus Christ. Okay. Even though Jesus loves all people, my church family, even though he loves all people, even though he died on the cross for you and I, and even though that he resurrected after three days, it does not excuse me and you to do whatever we want. This means that even though uh, we have wrongdoings, Jesus does not support our wrongful decisions. It must be planted in Jesus to do God's will. It must reflect his standard. Carson Valley, Jesus' love, Jesus love in today's gospel is not only an unconditional love. It is a fruit full love. It is the love that bears fruit. Uh, I can admit it is hard to love people you don't like. I, I really do. I can admit it with you. I'm with you. As Christians, one of the most difficult things to do is loving someone we don't love. It is one of those things like, oh, come on, Jesus. Uh, come on now. Uh, now. Now, this sermon is not encouraging you to all of a sudden just go, okay, I love you now. That's, that's, not, that's not what Jesus' love is all about. It is to approach, it is to approach one another as Christ has taught his disciples. The love of Christ applied in daily life might result in you not liking a person, but for the sake of Jesus, I have to respect you, right? I know you are there, but, I, but we're going to make this work because we love Jesus Christ. And, I, and we, we, one thing that uh, Len and I always preach to those that are new to this church is this. We have people that are right, far right. We have people that are far left. We have people that are Democrat. We have people that are Republican. We have people that are probably atheists. And we have people that are Christian. We have people here that like Harley Davidson um, motorcycles. We have people that like lifted trucks like myself. Okay. We have different people that are different. Uh, we have different flavors here. But we have one commonality even with all of our disagreements, it's because we, we love Jesus Christ. We love to build his kingdom. And that's one thing that is the most important thing, is to find Jesus. Jesus is our connection to our applied uh, life that we live every day. Um, doesn't mean I have to uh, tolerate you all the time, but I can respect you, right? Even though I'm not hanging out with you at... Um, 88 cups, or, or um, I'm not hanging out with you uh, after church in fellowship, but I'll, I'll meet you at Bible study, right? Jesus' is love is a standard of procedure in how we are to build the kingdom of God as one people. We don't have to like each other, but we must be cordial with one another in commonality with Christ. Uh, as Christians, to love like Jesus is an expectation, not a consideration. When you ex accepted Christ into your life, you already knew the terms and regulations of accepting this type of life. You already know it's going to be a, a wrestling match between your hate, your selfishness, your, your disagreements, to honor somebody else's will so that this kingdom can be built. To love all people are the, are the conditions, regardless of what I or you think of them. I am not encouraging you as your pastor to open your passage of love recklessly and to create and tell your barriers to go to the side and then say, okay, everybody, I got love for you. No, it, there is also a, a, you have to watch out how you love people and who do you love. There is that. That reflection. It is preaching a way to interact in reflection of Jesus' love, interacting with all people. To family, uh, to, to love like Jesus is to eliminate a judgmental hate towards another person. Now, now the Bible tells us that it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Now, speaking evil about someone, something that my generation or probably the younger generation is good at, is posting things on Facebook, defaming your neighbor, telling untrue things about them. We see it all the time in our, our political stances that we turn on the news. There's so much fake news out there about somebody else. We don't know that person. But, there's, but these are one of the things 
about loving your neighbor, to love one another, is to not speak untrue things about them, not to slander them, but to love them. To love them is to look, go beyond your human thoughts and ask the question, what would Jesus do? Would he say these things? Would he confirm these things? Now, my last part, um, the, to love all like Christ. Now, the author that I've read is Mar uh, Martin Thielen of a book called What's the, the Least I Can Believe and Still Be a Christian? Now, it sa he says that every Christian is called by God to pick up a towel and wash the feet of others, metaphorically speaking, um, and to know that this is what we are called to do, to wash the feet of others. And I, I know it kind of sounds weird, but here's the thing. I'm not telling you to go pour some water out and go wash your neighbor's feet. No, it's not. But it, it, is, it is a metaphorical speech that this author has told that we are called to serve one another. Not, not to wash feet, but to serve one another as Jesus would serve his disciples. Now, church family, the love of Christ is unconditional and transformative. That the love we have for one another as a church is needed, the love of the church that you and I share today is needed beyond our chapel walls. It's needed in Ukraine and Russia. It's needed in Israel and Palestine. It's needed in North Korea and China. It's needed in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. It's needed in Mexico and South America. It's needed here in the United States. The encouragement today of this month of May is a question, how do we love? To love like Christ is to love beyond your own expectation. It is to honor the will of God. It is the will of God. It is replacing what you expect with the expectation of God. As you take your bread and wine today, reflect on those who in your neighborhood or family and community need the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Christ on the cross to remind everyone who are believers it was a love for all people, no matter ethnicity, no matter sexuality, no matter political affiliation, no matter gender. It was for all people. Carson Valley, go into the world that God has called you to and to love one another and, and to love all people. Not to love in your own preference, but with the love of God in Jesus Christ. Embrace his will, fulfill the sacrificial love that is honoring the will of God, and conquer all things with love in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are going into our uh, communion, and we're going to honor Tony Hefner with the holy hand sanitizer. <laughs> if you're listening, Tony. One, one of the things that uh, about love is our love for Jesus Christ and how we share bread and wine. And one of the distinct things about Methodism is that everyone is welcome. You do not, I do not need to receive your confession. No, you do not need to take your confirmation class, but it would be nice if you did. <laughs> um, but you come as you are. You can come with your pajamas. You can come with your blankets. You can come dressed up nice, and is to invite you to, to, to the Lord to come as you are. It's an invitation to faith, to surrender, to repentance, and also an invitation to grace. Now let us prepare to receive this mystery of God's grace. If I have been a source of pain, O oh God, if to the weak I have refused my strength, if in rebellion I have strayed away, forgive me, God. If I have spoken words of cruelty, if I have left some suffering unrelieved, condemn not my insensitivity, forgive me, God. If I insisted on comfort, far from the struggles that the gospel brings, when you are guiding me into that struggle, forgive me, God. Receive, O God, this prayer 
with tender patience, lead me to your care. Amen. Hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, are blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made, a, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and gave this to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. <clears throat> when the supper was over, he took the cup and again he gave thanks to you. He gave the cups to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a low, holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The table is set. Come as you are. We have blue and free wafers. And if you need communion to be brought to you and you cannot come to the table, we will bring it to you.
Is there anyone that needs communion be brought to them physically? Just for Lynn? Okay. You're special. You are. The body of God is given to you.
ですよ Thank you for this gift of、uh, bread and wine. We know that we always fall short, but you always take a chance on us, Lord, taking us back. And so today you have taught us how to love, to do your will. And so, Lord, speak to us through this bread and wine so that we may continue to do your will through Jesus Christ.、And、so, Lord, strengthen your church, prepare us for. Many endeavors of this month. And so we celebrate you in this communion table, Lord, to welcome all to your presence in love. And we ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Ask everyone who, are, who is able to please stand if you are、uh, to, to speak and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is One Bread. One body.
I got some important reminders for you, more than a few. Uh, flowers today are from Max Han and Jerry Hilton, uh, just because. Uh, uh, we have the chair exercise for all ages, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is the resistance uh, training class here at the Fellowship Hall. And it starts at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and a dollar a week suggested donation. <clears throat> Uh, join the United Women's and Faith Heavenly Holiday Craft Fair team first and third Mondays, which is tomorrow, 9.30 to noon. All welcome supplies provided. Uh, Staff Parish Relations Committee this Tuesday at 5 p.m. It will be riveting. <laughs> uh, men's Upper Room Group uh, this Wednesday or all Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Uh, Thursday, May 9th, 11.30 a.m., uh, pot potluck luncheon. This is for the United Women's in Faith. 12.15 uh, p.m., City of Refuge baby shower. All welcome. See you there. Bring gifts early. Uh, youth group this Thursday at 5 p.m., dinner and games. Uh, there's a prayer tree right behind, y'all. It's, it's still growing. Uh, and... If, uh, we encourage you all to pick up a prayer request in the back. The power of prayer is always needed every day, every week, every minute, every second. Happy Mother's Day to all that are here, uh, all for next Sunday. If you wish to wear your special hat or bonnet, do so. The two will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a lot to cover up there. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me say benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen. Amen.